right, hello wine drinking people. We are back. It is Saturday, September 25th, and it's time for what I drank yesterday. All right, well, just one supplier in the store. You know, Friday's not a very busy day for us usually. And uh, we had our friends from the Emerald Wine Group, and uh, that's the importer that brings us Catena. And uh, some pretty good stuff in that uh, group. We've done several tastings with them throughout the years. And uh, we had Ignacio, which is the viticulturist for Leda Vineyards, which is actually the name of a region which is just to the west of the Casablanca Valley leading out onto the coast there in Chile. And this is a cooler area, very good for grapes like Pinot Noir and Sauvignon Blanc. And that's what we had yesterday, the Sauvignon Blanc. This has become one of the greatest value areas in the world for Sauvignon Blanc. The Veramonte, a wine from a similar area in Chile, our best-selling Sauvignon Blanc in the $10 price range the last few years in the store. Just outstanding quality for the money coming from here. This wine had lovely gooseberry and grapefruit citrus on the nose uh, with a slight hint of green grass. Some nice gravelly minerally notes here too. Bright and fresh on the palates. A uh, really nice little coiffer for 10 bucks. Wow. Next up we had the uh, Garuma Vineyard Sauvignon Blanc and this is the next step up here and just a little tiny step up in price $16.25 but a little more tropical fruit a little more papaya uh, very high acidity but high pH with these wines also pink grapefruit citrus a little more minerality to the nose maybe a little more a little understated but uh, definitely more refined on the palate and a lovely texture of uh, whole milk here with a balanced acidity and a nice minerality to the finish definitely quite a bit longer than the uh, first wine excellent little wine for $16.25 all right, next up we have the Chardonnay. They make Chardonnay everywhere, man. It's hard for me to get excited about $10 Chardonnay from Chile. And this was definitely the least impressive wine in the lineup. But still not a bad wine for 10 bucks. And then the, the Pinot Noirs, which, uh, God, the best-selling Pinot Noir in the store the last year has been Veramonte for eleven seventy-five. Usually I don't have Pinot on the shelf in that price range because it's not something that I personally want to drink. And I do not bring wine in the store unless I will bring it home personally and drink it. That's the only rule that I have. And these two Pinots, I would definitely bring home to drink. The first one, uh, nice light black raspberry fruit, a little smoky notes, distinctive, earth, distinctive earthy quality, which makes Chilean wine some of the easiest to pick out in a brown bag. A lot of them have this slightly green, peppery, herbaceousness kind of note to them. And this wine had a little bit of that. A little bit is not bad. Again, some lovely black raspberry and wild strawberry fruit on the palate with a hint of spice. And again, that distinct minerality coming in on the finish. Next up, we have a single vineyard Pinot from Leda, the Las Brisas. This wine, very nice. A bit more elegant and refined. A little nicer floral note, oriental spice. And a little less of that fresh Chilean earthiness which um, just a touch of it, like I said, adds a little bit to the wine, some distinction about where it's from. You know that I like wines that speak about the place where they come from. This wine had uh, some lovely fresh re black raspberry fruit on the palate, elegant spice, floral notes, uh, definitely a bit more Burgundian in style than the first one. Maybe one you wouldn't pick out as a Chilean Pinot Noir in a blind tasting, but uh, this vineyard's got southwest exposure, a single block from one clone and from lower yields with red clay-like soils. Excellent little wine for 20 bucks. Wow, really good value. All right, well, that's all I had in the store. Wait a minute. It's Friday, man. We got happy hour. Hey, we had the consigliere in. We had Robert in. We had uh, Mr. Coffee in. Some great stuff, guys. Thank you very much. This 96 Maryvale profile, wow. Man, drinking at or near its peak. It was the last bottle we had, unfortunately, but lovely, soft, round, current cassis berry fruit, velvety tannins. Most people don't know, but this is where Bob Levy used to work before they started Harlan. <coughs> so the old Maryvale profile, some of the greatest wines made in Napa Valley, some phenomenal vineyard sites, and uh, like I said, one of the br most brilliant minds in winemaking in all of California. I don't know if he was there for this 96. It was a wine that was not very highly regarded on release. I think it got like a 90-point score, but this point in its life, it's drinking at its peak. Beautiful. Next up, we have the 89 Bernier de Cru. Wow. Fabulous wine. This is one of the top properties in St. Julien. 89, a vintage that a lot of people consider in the top level of vintages, maybe the top five in the last 50 years. I wouldn't put it there. Uh, Obreon La Mission, Obreon, the great wines from this vintage. But wines like this Bernier de Cru, drinking beautiful right now. They're not going to need much more time. We popped it open and drank it. It was lovely, soft red currant berry fruit, some nice distinct earthiness that you get from Bordeaux, and uh, still nice nice and fresh, but again, it opened up really quick and uh, was drinking at or near its peak, I would say. 
the Harmonium. Wow, this is the best Nero Diavolo. One of the best Nero Diavolos we've ever had in the store. This is from Ferriato Winery. And one of the things you notice about the reds from Southern Italy is their plump, ripe fruitiness. A lot of people would mistake these for New World wines because it's hotter down there in Sicily. And Nero Diavolo has this lovely, ripe, seductive, plummy, jammy fruit uh, and lovely, silky, smooth uh, finish, but still has some substance to it, some tannins. A really nice bottle of wine showing really nice SO4 harmonium. All right, you know I'm having wine with dinner, and last night, well, we were over at a friend's house, and uh, I just happened to have a bottle of 2007 Jadot Santenay Clos de Malt, which we just specialed on an email this week, and a bottle of 2007 Louis Latour Santenay. What a great comparison. Same vintage, two different negotiants, and uh, we had a couple people in the room, and it's uh, the crowd was mixed. You know, I was really surprised to see some people like the Latour better. I like the Judo better. I think the Judo had a little more stuffing to it, a little more forward and ripe fruit, and just a little more complexity on the finish. But Santanés tend to be a little austere, and the Louis Latour wine maybe uh, just a little lighter in style than the Judo. I think that's why a couple people liked it better. But hey, it just goes to show you, man. Everybody's got a different opinion about uh, a wine, and as long as you have good wines, you're going to have a mixed crowd on wh which wine is the best on any given Sunday. All right, well, that's what I had to drink yesterday. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.